Okay, this sermon's entitled, Lord, Teach Us to Pray. I'd like to open up with prayer and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for uh, giving me this audacity player and uh, allowing me to preach on this subject, very important subject. I pray that you allow us to understand what your word says on this subject and how to pray. Keep us safe, bless us abundantly, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, let me open up with um, Psalm 119, verses 13, 113 to 117, and it reads, I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live, and let not and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold thou me up, hold thou me up, and I shall be safe, and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. Now, what does that mean? Have respect unto thy statutes. It's talking about God's words. One of the secrets of, and the keys to praying is to pray right out of God's word. Okay, it's to keep, it's to stay in the word. But see, if you turn to, Ju uh, excuse me, Luke chapter eleven, we're going to take a look at the Lord's prayer. And so I'm just, I wanted to point that out because there are people out there that are praying to God and they're not, they're not reading the Bible. And the Bible makes that very clear that in John chapter fifteen, that let's just go ahead and turn there real quick. <clears throat> One of the conditions of having your prayers answered is staying in the word. John fifteen. John chapter 15 verse 7 it talks about if you know if you abide in me and my words abide in you 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 can ask what you ask whatever you want and you'll give it let me just go ahead and turn there John 15 verse 7 it says let me read read it word for word if ye abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you so one of the keys to having your prayers answered is to abide in God's word you abide in God you abide in Jesus Christ by reading the bible okay period Okay, so let's turn over to Luke chapter 11, and let's, let me just read the uh, few verses here. It says, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Now, I'm going to read the Lord's Prayer here, and then I'm going to jump back and break this down. Okay? As he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive every one that is in, that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight? And say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Now, I've, I've read the entire Lord, Lord's Prayer. You know, it stops at verse 4. But see, I'm going to keep reading because this is kind of an outline so having your prayers answered and outlined as to how to you know how we are to pray. So let's just keep going here. Okay, for a friend of mine is in is in in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, and yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he he needeth. Now let's let's stop at verse ten. Okay, let me read verses nine and ten, then I'm going to back it up and break and break this apart. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given to you; it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find; knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Okay, now, now let's break. Let's go back to the beginning here. Now, it, it talks about in verse 1, these people are in a certain place. So that's a key to, to praying, you know, is to be in a certain place. You don't want to be out where it's just chaos. Nothing but sonic mayhem and noise and, and just commotion. You want to be in a place that's very solitudinous, very, um, you know, tranquil, serene. A, a place of quietude is what I'm trying to say. So that's why he's saying these people are praying in a certain place. Now, he's asking. Tell, he's, he says, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. So Jesus Christ is given in a paradigm for how to pray. It says, when ye pray, say, our Father which art in heaven. Okay? Hallowed be thy name. Now, what does hallowed mean? It means consecrated. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Now, he's saying in verse, in, in, in verse 3, give us day by day our daily bread. So one of the keys to praying is to pray for what you need. Don't, don't, don't pray you know, superfluously. Don't ask for too much. Just pray for what you need on a daily basis. Okay? And forgive us our sins. Now, this forgiveness is not, you know, 
forensic forgiveness that, t that took place at the cross. This is a, a daily personal forgiveness to restore our fellowship with God. Okay, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. That's a good prayer. I like the prayer of Jabez. Okay, it talks about asking God to keep his hand upon you, to keep you from evil so that we'll not grieve you. See, this is also a good prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay, so this is the ideal prayer. Now let's jump ahead. Go ahead and just jump down to verse 8. Now it talks about the word importunity. Now what does that mean? What does it mean to be importunate? Not important. Okay, importunate or to importune. It's to beg. It's to go after something in a way where you're just beseeching. So one of the keys to having your prayers answered is to is to pray with importunity. Basically, God gets to, basically God hears you pray. You're praying repetitively over and over again the same thing, and then God answers the prayer. Now, and finally, verse nine and ten, it talks about asking. Asking is simply supplicating, asking God for something. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear. My, you know, my complaint, you know, and hear me, I mourn in my complaint. Okay, attend unto me and hear me, I mourn in my complaint. That's Psalm, uh, that's, I believe Psalm 50, um, let me just back up and find that. So it's very important to ask. Psalm 50, um, 5, verses 1 and 2, okay. My point is, ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Now, I've, I've, I've read... And this is, this is biblical, and I've also read this in some book on prayer. It says whenever you pray for something, okay, be, be, be ready to receive it. In other words, if you pray to go out, if you pray for people to witness to, don't just sit around in your house expecting them to come to you. Go out to where they are. And, you know, or whatever you pray for. If you pray to find money on the ground, if you pray to find whatever, whatever your person prays for. You, you pray for a job, you pray for anything. You need to go out and do your part. It's not just going to come to you, if you by, by just sitting back and doing nothing. Now, sometimes I, 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 sometimes it, prayers can be answered like that. If it's a type, it's the, if it's the type of prayer that doesn't require you to go out and um, and see the results. But my point is, we need to be taught how to pray. The bottom line is that we just do it. We just pray. I and mean, if you don't not really know how to do it, just talk to God, like you would talk to you know somebody else with respect, of course. <clears throat> okay, look at verse thirteen. This basically wraps up my point about asking. When you ask, you'll receive. It says, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more, so, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So my point is, basically the key is just asking. Okay, let me, let me look at one last verse on this. John chapter 11. Turn over to John chapter 11. It's another verse about asking. Okay, John chapter 11, and let's take a look at verse um, 22. This is, a, this is a, the key to, a key to getting your prayers answered. Okay, it says, But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Now, of course, you have to ask for things that are not amiss. It talks about that in James. If you're asking for something that's, that's, that's lustful or sinful, God's not going to answer it. God, why would God give you something that's going to cause you know, your life to become, you know, ruined, or your life to become defiled, or your life to become, you know, just totally messed up? And that's what sin does. It messes your life up. It ruins. It ruins. Your, it ruins your character. So of course we need to ask within the realm of according to God's will. You know, ask it in Jesus' name. But the Bible makes it very clear: whatsoever that will to ask of God, God will give it thee. So that's all I have. Um, let me close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon and just going over some of the principles of prayer and some of the different methods. And it's very important that we find our a nice, quiet prayer closet. And then we ask according to your will, and then we just pray right out of the scriptures. It's, it's really good to pray out of the Psalms because the Psalms are prayers. So I just ask that you keep us safe, bless us abundantly, and keep us you know, doctrinally sound as we uh, continue on in, in our growth, our spiritual growth. In Jesus' name I ask this, amen.